Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna do some more ballistics testing, this time with 300 Blackout. If you guys follow the channel, you'll know I'm madly in love with my SIG Rattler. This thing is in 300 Blackout. It has a five and a half inch barrel. On top of it, I have a ANR design uh, base and then a Trigicon RMR. This is a SP Tactical brace, by the way. And on the end of it, we have an OSS, and that's a Helix, and that's a titanium can that's on here. So this is really designed for a 308, but I've put it on here because it's titanium, it's lightweight, and it gives me some pretty darn good suppression. The other firearm we brought out today, that's a pistol. This one's actually an SBR. This is a BCM 300 Blackout. It has a nine inch barrel. So SIG has the five and a half inch barrel. This has a nine inch barrel. On top of it, I have a Trichicon ACOG. This one has a 300 Blackout BDC reticle in it. And this is one of my other favorite 300 Blackouts. This is probably your most conventional uh, size in terms of barrel length. The Rattler really brings that barrel length down to what I thought was a ridiculous level. <laughs> We've done several videos on it, even Mr. Guns and Gear was out here, and it was pretty impressive just how accurate the thing was out at even 250 yards. So don't let that little barrel surprise you in terms of accuracy. It can put down the goods, and that's with supers and subs. But we're going to see what the velocity difference there is. You know, five and a half versus nine, there should be a significant velocity difference, and how's that going to play out with the ammunition we're going to use this afternoon? We have some Federal 200, I believe it's 220 grain. Yeah, this is Federal 220 grain American Eagle 300 Blackout. And then we have some Federal 300 Blackout that is 120 grain. And this is more or less a hunting 300 Blackout load or a lot of folks like it for self-defense. So it's supersonic though. All right, so we're gonna shoot some watermelons this afternoon and see what type of hydrostatic shock we get. Now keep in mind a watermelon is about 90% water. The human lungs are about 83% water. So it should give us a, a fairly accurate representation of what the hydrostatic shock might look like. Now with the slower 300 blackout subsonics, a lot of people liken it to a 45 ACP and yeah, it's got about the same energy, 220 grain bullet that's moving at just under subsonic speeds. The only difference being it's football shaped versus brick shaped. <laughs> so it has a much higher ballistic coefficient. So it's gonna be interesting to see how the supers and subs perform against our watermelons. So let's get this test started. We would like to thank our friends at Big Daddy Unlimited for helping to make this and other videos possible. If you'd like to help us out, swing by the BDU website and just for 99 cents, you can try out their service for one month. And they're basically like the Sam's Club of the online world. So check them out. If you would like to stay a member, go by militaryarms.org. There's a big link right at the top of the website and you can stay a member for 20% off every month going forward. So please check them out. All right, guys, so we have our target 15 yards away. We're first gonna use the nine inch barreled BCM SBR, and we're gonna shoot some American Eagle 220 grain subsonic rounds. Now, I didn't mention in the opening of the video, what can I have on here? This is an Omega 9K suppressor on the end of the gun, so both guns are suppressed, one with an OSS, the other one with a silencer co can. All right, with that being said, let's take careful aim and see what a subsonic does to our watermelon 15 yards away. <laughs> exactly what I expected. If you guys watched our 556 video where we were shooting 556 out of different rifles doing pretty much the same test, there obviously was considerably more hydrostatic shock to the watermelon. If you take a look at this watermelon, it performed pretty much as I expected. Punched a hole going in and left a hole coming out. Again, that was a 220 grain subsonic load at 15 yards. So not a whole lot of hydrostatic shock, but that does not mean that that round is not lethal. Lethality isn't necessarily determined just by hydrostatic shock. Yes, hydrostatic shock does do more tissue damage, but simply poking a hole in something that shouldn't have a hole poked in it will be lethal. That's why 22 long rifle, which has an almost no hydrostatic shock, is still very capable of killing somebody or animals. You, there's people that poach deer with 22s. So don't mistake the lack of hydrostatic shock for lack of lethality. All right, now let's set this test up and do it again. This time use a supersonic federal load and see if we get that hydrostatic shock that we're looking for. All right, guys, here we go with the supersonic load. This is from Federal. 
It's a 120 grain non-lead bullet. So uh, it looks like a machined copper bullet has a rather cavernous hollow point in the nose of it for a rifle round. And now we're going to shoot it out of our nine inch barreled BCM and see what type of devastation we can cause here with a 300 blackout with a nine inch barrel. Whoa, okay. <laughs> All right, so we saw really good performance out of that 120 grain projectile. This piece and this piece were the only two pieces that were left by uh, the round after it hit the watermelon. I picked these up off the ground just to give you guys an idea of the really good trauma that it caused to the material, to the inside of the uh, watermelon. It's, it's just turned to mush. So it did really, really well. Most of the stuff got blown far away from the table. Pieces over here pieces over here. So not a whole lot left there to cat catalog. <laughs> we'll put it over here with our subsonic one. <laughs> All right, let's see what that little rattler's capable of. This should prove to be interesting going to a five and a half inch barrel from a nine inch barrel. Do you think it's gonna make that big of a difference? Let's find out. All right, so with the rattler, we noticed when we were confirming zero this morning that we have considerably noticeable bullet drop even at 15 yards. But also keep in mind, I have this one set up for CQB, uh, for close send self-protection. I keep it with me when I travel. I keep it by my bedside in case something goes bump in the night. So I'm shooting at relatively close ranges. So in this case, we're gonna have to aim about two inches high with the subsonic round to get a center of mass hit on our watermelon. So 220 grain Federal. And we do wanna thank our friends at Federal for supplying the ammunition to the channel because without their support, uh, our reoccurring costs, especially in today's uh, market, would be just insurmountable, would be unreal. So our friends at Federal really do help us create con content by supplying the ammunition. So be sure to, to support Federal for us. All right, here we go. Subsonic, five and a half inch barrel, Sig Rattler. All right, guys, so this is actually a really interesting result. A 220 grain subsonic load out of that rattler with its five and a half inch barrel, point of aim, point of impact, like I said, you know, a couple inches low. So we got a nice, perfect center hit, nice little entry wound. Look at this. It blew the back of that watermelon out. Now, that is a desirable result for two reasons, in my opinion. Here's what I think happened. And you can see the hole inside that thing. Once that subsonic round hit out of that short barrel, it quickly destabilized and started to tumble. And that's why we see that much damage inside and that huge blowout. That round most likely was tumbling. So at short distances with subsonic ammunition, that little SIG Rattler may perform better than a nine inch barreled gun. Again, this is not scientific information, but there's certainly usable information of what we're showing you here this afternoon. And honestly, guys, that really surprised me. Just to show you an example, here's our 300 blackout subsonic out of the nine inch barreled BCM, entrance and exit. That's a stark difference between the two in terms of performance. That rattler continues to impress me. I love that gun. Let's see what it does with supers. All right, guys, now we have the Federal 120 grain round loaded. Again, it's a lead-free bullet with a hollow point. Supersonic, out of the five and, five and a half inch barrel of my rattler. Let's see what we get. <laughs> That's pretty epic. <laughs> Wow. 
Well, we got more hydrostatic shock, not nearly as much as we did out of the nine inch barrel, but it seems that that three and a half inch of barrel truly makes a difference. We cut this watermelon in half. Now you can see that there is tissue damage and it's split open, but not nearly as violent as the, uh, the supersonic round out of that nine inch barrel. So that's really interesting. I definitely wouldn't want to get hit by either the Super or the Subsonic at close range with that SIG Rattler. Now, again, it's kind of funny. I've actually shot supersonic rounds out to 250 yards and got decent groups using a red dot sight. This exact same setup you see out here this afternoon. So, like I said, that SIG Rattler is pretty darn cool. Yeah. All right, let's set up the next test. All right, guys. So we've already got 50 bucks wrapped up in this test. We're running out of stuff to shoot at, but we had to decide whether we wanted to use the nine inch barrel or the five and a half inch barrel for the next and only test that we can do. And so I decided to go with the five and a half inch barrel of the SIG Rattler. Why? Because I love that gun and it gave really interesting performance with subsonic loads. And I actually use it as my preferred self-defense weapon when I'm traveling or even at home. With that being said, giving tribute to Paul Harrell who came up with the meat target. Uh, he uses different types of layered material, he uses a bag of oranges to simulate lung material. He'll use ribs and clothing, leather, things like that. Then he has a bullet stop in the back. This is our version of that. We have a watermelon here. We have some pork ribs in front, pork ribs in back. So we got our lungs, we got meat and ribs simulating chest of an animal or a bad guy. And let's see what that subsonic round that was so impressive the first time on just a bare watermelon does with a meat target. All right, I'm looking forward to the outcome of this. All right, guys, here we go. 220 grain Federal subsonic 300 blackout, five and a half inch barrel, SIG Rattler. Let's see what she does. <laughs> All right, let's go look at that. All right, guys, that SIG with its five and a half inch barrel with that subsonic load is actually pretty impressive. Definitely a lethal punch. The bullet went in right where it was supposed to, right here. It nicked a rib, didn't hit a solid a rib, nicked a rib, went in, came around. Bullet's tumbling clearly because it, it went in low, exited high right here. You can see where it, it exited high on this rib. So it, it moved up about an inch and a half and you can see the split in the watermelon. You can definitely see the damage to the meat. And once again, we nicked a rib. We didn't get a solid hit on a rib coming through, but it left a, a very nasty wound. Well, let me take that back. That's a piece of bone right there. That's a piece of broken bone. Ow, that's sharp. It did, it nicked a rib. Maybe didn't hit it square, but there's definitely bone material in the meat. So it did hit a rib. Let's take a look on the inside here. Look at that. Guys, I'm gonna call that impressive. There you go, you can see the bullet. It, it, this, this is a bullet hitting sideways and you can see it hit sideways and the tip of the bullet nicked this rib. That's where I got the bone fragment. Then the, the majority of the bullet went between the ribs, but the very tip of the bullet, because the bullet came in this way, tumbling, it nicked that rib right there. And then the rest of it went through there. But we definitely got the hydrostatic shock inside that you'd wanna see. Wow, everything about that SIG makes me love it. Now I know some of you guys are gonna say that's abysmal performance, whatever, for how I use that rifle. This is really kind of eye-opening for me today because I haven't done these types of tests with that short barrel before. And um, I was really surprised because I keep it loaded with subsonic so it's quiet in the house if I have to use it, have it suppressed with subsonics. And this tells me at the distances they may have to use it, it's gonna be very capable.
All right, so we're back to taking a look at that BCM watermelon that was the first one we shot with the subsonic round out of the nine inch barrel, where we have a clean entrance hole and a clean exit. Let's go ahead and cut it open and see what it looks like on the inside in terms of hydrostatic shock. Wow, not much at all. You can definitely see, obviously, how it affected the watermelon here, but that wound cavity is very narrow as if the bullet just passed through. Definitely a little bit of hydrostatic shock going on, but not enough, enough to uh, split the watermelon open. Again, interesting results. Vast difference between that nine inch barrel versus that five and a half inch barrel with the subsonic ammunition. I want to give you guys a quick demonstration of the capabilities of the SIG Rattler with subsonic ammunition. One of the many reasons why I love this firearm and I choose to keep it by my bedside and take it on the road with me. I have some American Eagle 220 grain subsonic ammunition loaded into my Lancer magazine. It's a 20 rounder that I keep in the gun. Now I'm going to shoot just using my RMR sight on my ANR design mount. From 100, 150, then let's try our luck at 200 and see what we get. So let's start off at 100. Entirely too easy. Let's go on out to 150. Haven't missed yet. All right, let's try our luck at 200. There's some serious bullet drop going on at 200, but let's see if I can just guess made a hold here. Hit. 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 And another hit. I mean, guys, it's insane that that little five and a half inch barrel, and keep in mind, part of that is the actual chamber, so it doesn't truly have five and a half inches of barrel, is still able to accurately deliver aimed fire out to 200 yards out of this tiny, handy little package. Man, I love this SIG Rattler. Okay, so what do we learn in today's video? Well, definitely the 300 Blackout prefers a longer barrel. You're going to get better velocity and better terminal performance in general, but we did see that with the shorter barrel using subsonic ammunition, this thing produced some pretty devastating wounds because it appeared that the bullet was tumbling with inside the watermelon and it left a wound channel that was actually quite surprising. So having a nine inch barrel is definitely a good thing if you wanna shoot a little bit further, if you wanna hunt with it, you know, maximize performance of hunting rounds like this federal ammunition with 120 grain projectile. It's gonna give you more velocity, get you closer up to being you know, like 760 by 39 in, in terms of power. But don't discount the capabilities of a short barreled 300 blackout like this SIG Rattler because this thing performs amazingly well and the terminal performance of those subsonic rounds was actually quite surprising for me because again, I keep this gun set up in this configuration for my own personal defense. It was really interesting to see those results. Certainly didn't expect them. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the video because it was a lot of fun producing it today. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel so we can continue to bring you information like this, please consider become, becoming part of our uh, Patreon family. Guys, we got demonetized a long time ago like many other channels did on YouTube and now we are supported by you, our viewing audience, to keep producing these videos. We need your support. Conversely, right here, another option is a join button right underneath the video player. And you can click that join button right here on YouTube, become part of our membership program, and support us right here on YouTube. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thanks for 12 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon.